How are you? Hi. Good, good, good. Right. Well, how the heck do we follow that? <laughs> I actually thought that's a really good um, introduction to what we do um, at, at Alibaba. Um, good. We, we work, obviously, a lot with L'Oreal as a brand. Um, and the technology I was just showcased, uh, I didn't prepare for this, but um, when I look at it, it looks a lot like, uh, like we have something called, um, Alibaba had this thing called new retail, which eventually means the convergence between online and offline. And, and offline stores a lot of technology, uh, something we call magic mirror. It, eventually you go there and you kind of, you demonstrate um, eventually using technology powered by the cloud um, and, and data and AI and it shows you, you can try to close out and you can try to wear different uh, makeups. So I actually thought that's a really good, very good intro. Um, yeah. Good. Purple hair for you? <laughs> We can it's a bit late for me. Yeah. But, uh, good. Anyway, no, so that's great. That's great. And you two are both going to be on this panel in a few minutes, so I'm sure you can talk more about that. That was set up splendidly. So we were going to talk a little bit about Alibaba, and there's sort of three areas, really, three divisions, aren't there, Bruce? So just, just give us a sort of quick note on each of the three, and then one of them we're going to talk about, or a couple we're going to talk about mostly. Yeah, we'll probably don't have time to talk through all the, you know, because Alibaba is growing into a, a, such a big uh, behemoth these days, particularly in China. But in Australia, there are three mainly areas that we sort of focus on. Um, the first area is obviously e-commerce, and, and, and most of them is cross-border, e what we call cross-border e-commerce. That's down through our Tmall and Taobao platforms. Uh, eventually, if you think about, there are, you know, currently 300 million uh, middle class in China, um, and they all demand you know, healthier products, better products, and Australia sort of had that premium, healthy image. Um, so we, we help uh, Australian brands sell to, to the China market, to the to consumers directly. Um, there are currently 2,000 Australian brands on our platform um, and 700 uh, New Zealand brands on our platform. Most of them, a lot of them, um, there are big brands like Woolies and, and, and Chemist Warehouse, but a lot of brands are smaller um, and uh, a lot of them entered the market for the first time um, digitally um, through, through the Alibaba platform. So that's what we call the e-commerce platform. And also, um, currently there are 1.2 million Chinese, Chinese population in Australia, um, including the immigrants, uh, 200,000 Chinese students. Um, so that's the, you know, as a brand, you, how do you market to that sort of more diversified local audience? So we help. If you're, uh, I don't know, a, a, a local Chinese new immigrant that you want to buy, a, I don't know, a soy bean making machine, and you, you can't probably source it here. So you have to buy from the other suppliers from Asia. So we also facilitate that. So it's going both ways. So that's the first pillar, which is the, the cross-border e-commerce, which is what we focus on. Uh, the second pillar is the, um, the mobile payment platform, uh, Alipay, uh, which we had a partnership announced with, with CBA and NAP. Um, very much focused on the, the China outbound tourist sector. Um, and the, um, last year, I think the data shows uh, there are 1.43 million um, outbound Chinese tourists in, uh, to Australia, um, pumping $10 billion into the Australian economy. And that number is projected to reach 3 million in the next couple of years. And, um, and uh, the recent, most recent Nielsen study shows 99% of those tourists had Alipay installed in their mobile app. Mm. Um, so, and that's the, the other thing that I want to sort of mention is this whole convergence between online and offline from a digital standpoint where you imagine you're, you're landed in your Sydney airport with your Alipay app um, on your mobile. And it's, uh, in China, we, you know, we look at a WeChat and all these um, Alipay included uh, this has almost become what we call super apps. So, the app does multiple things. Um, you can hail a taxi, you can make payments, you can pay your utility bills, you can buy movie tickets, um, you, can, you can purchase financial services products um, from assets management standpoint. Um, and they did, you can do everything in one app. And imagine you have that in your phone, you land in the airport, you open your app, you're trying to find out, figure out where are the place I should be going, which restaurant I should be visiting. Uh, maybe I want to go to the, the Gucci store or what have, the, you know, um, the LVM chill, what have, what have you. And once you visit, the app is going to show you, and once you visit that Gucci store, afterwards, say, you go to some other places um, and we'll, we'll send you a coupon um, or, or, or some sort of deal or promotion. So that, that, that experience from online to offline becomes seamless. Um, and uh, if, you, if you go hail a taxi here, there, I think there are 
25,000 taxis are already plugged in with Alipay that you can pay with your, with your mobile. And, and in China, I don't carry cash anymore. Uh, it's completely cashless. Um, and um, they're, they're currently, the platform has a billion user, and that's, I think, the, the most recent evaluation is around $150 billion or something like that. Um, so with Ant Financial, which is affiliated with Alibaba Group. Um, so that's the second pillar. The third pillar is sort of the, the cloud computing, uh, which eventually powers everything that Landor was showing uh, from a technology standpoint and big data and AI standpoint. Um, and our cloud team is relatively small here, but we, we launched a data center uh, local region back in 2016. A lot of people don't know that you can run workloads and store data in Sydney and uh, our data centers. Um, and uh, obviously we focus very heavily on the retail sector and, and, and the, the China um, for business who wants to obviously do, um, expand to Asia and in China. Uh, so that's the cloud computing arm, which eventually powers everything I just mentioned from a data, uh, you can think of that as a, the plumbing of internet, right? Um, that's kind of the next next uh, uh, pillar that we that we focus on. Okay. Yeah. Are there many brands in this room who are working with Alibaba? L'Oreal obviously are. Any others? <sighs> Opportunities, Bruce. Opportunities, look <laughs> at them We have provided eyeballs for all of you. <laughs> okay. um, and and um, for, for brands too, um, it's a, you know, we hope our technology can enable the brands, particularly if you have plans to expand um, into Asia and into China, obviously. Um, the second thing is we're actually working with, I don't know if Iconic is here or, or other sort of e-commerce brands, but um, the, the, the technology was just showcased, uh, you know, things like image search. Um, if you go to, if you open your Iconic app um, and you tap on that, you like that close, you want to take a photo of it. Instead of search typing keywords, you basically take a photo and the, this, the image search is going to show you all the similar um, um, clothing. Um, and, and that's powered by obviously big data and it's an AI, but that the products we commercialize called image search, that's what we as a te technology enabler to help the local brands um, as well. So, does anyone want to ask Bruce any questions on this? It's a good opportunity <coughs> to find out a little bit more about Alibaba. We're going to ask you some other things in a moment, but if anybody does on that, what we've heard so far, Go on, don't be shy. No? All right, I'll come back to you. So I, mean, we, I look at, so Amazon in the UK is obviously got a huge presence. And on the one hand, it's, it's enhancing opportunities for the brands. On the other hand, people might look at it and think it might disintermediate them. And you know, quite rightly so, I think, in some cases. Do you, do you, is that conversation held with you at the moment or at the moment because you're just moving people into different markets presumably it's not a conversation that comes up. Oh it's up. actually a very common question yeah. um, and, and people uh, the, the, uh, so two, two points I want to make one is um, the, the business model that Alibaba has um, is fundamentally different from from the way I understand how Amazon operates uh, I think they launched here two years ago and saw a lot of Black Friday ads um, the, the, so what, how we look at our, uh, we're sort of measured on what we call GMV, so growth uh, merchandise value, which eventually means the transactions happen on the Alibaba platform. So it's an enabler for brands to, so we look at those transactions, and we don't actually make revenue from, from those. Um, well, there's other ways from advertising and other things that we, we actually make revenue. Um, I, I don't think we do direct sale, unlike Amazon. So I think that the, that, that business model, I think when Jack Ma started his business, I think that's first point number one, business model is very different. Um, point number two, um, I, I think it all comes down to, I never work at Amazon, so I, I can't really comment on that. But I, I think what, what a company does fundamentally is, is the, the vision and the mission and the DNA and the value that drives all, every decision that you make. When I think when Jack Ma started the, the company, he doesn't have a rich uncle or, or, or a powerful dad, so to speak. Um, to me, it's just a, uh, and the reason I joined Alibaba from Google is I, I, I can, that that's really relatable. And I think that's almost like a, a Silicon Valley story, but happened happened in China when Jack started business with 18 of his founders in, in his apartment. Um, so he's, the vision of the company is really empower other business to do, uh, to make it easy to do business everywhere. Um, and empower other brands, and also the, the technology that Alibaba Cloud develops that, that we externalize, the example just gave is, is empowering other, other brands. Um, we don't have any recent you know, plans to, to actually change that, and I think that DNA runs 
um, deeply into. So you think it's a very different Where it's still very much have a startup sort of sure. um, So a very different mentality. culture to Amazon, but also a different culture to Google from your experience there? Uh, yeah, yeah, very different. Obviously, um, Google is very, has a very strong culture. It's very engineering-driven, product-driven. I, th I think there are Googlers in this room, so um, I'm an ex-Googler, and uh, I really I love the company. Um, and, uh, but I think in these days, don't be evil is not enough, right? That's what Jake used to say. And um, as, a tech, as a tech in general, I think we need to do good. Um, and um, and uh, we'll have a lot of you know, likely or not, we're, we're just, these companies become so big now and um, it carries a lot of, you know, responsibilities. Um, so, yeah. And we mentioned earlier, just very briefly, voice and voice marketing. So that presumably is a technology that uh, Alibaba are going to uh, exploit, let us say. In the yeah, I think all the voice. tech tech uh, players are... Um, what, well, one thing you... Well, how do you think you're going to? Sort of what was, uh, uh, well, a few examples that um, what... If you think about mobile, is the last sort of trend, uh, or sort of last wave sort of happened. Uh, a lot of people obviously think voice is the next thing. Um, so people are thinking, what's next after mobile? Um, obviously, it's debatable, but I think a lot of people think voice is the next thing for, for both for marketers, for brands. Um, if you think of the Google Home or Amazon Alexa equivalent, like Alibaba has an equivalent called Timo Genie. So in China, uh, it's not here, but in China, um, Timo Genie is already integrated with BMW. So every BMW cars um, that's going to be manufactured and sold in, in China is going to be integrated with that um, that technology, uh, with voice control and everything, and, and brings that experience seamlessly. Um, so short answer is yeah, I think that's probably going to be where the next uh, you know if you pick a pick one thing, that's probably the next thing. Next phase. And what else do you think we're going to see heading this way from? From China, I, I think I think we're just you know, in a humble way. I, I, I just, but I do think we're we're fortunate in the sense that um, we're just sitting on a lot of data. Um, and currently, the with China, just just keep in mind, China is big, but China is still poor in, in the sense that you know the the the, the, the GDP per capita is eight thousand US dollars, um, and in Australia the number is fifty five thousand, so it's seven times. Um, but Australia, obviously, is a, it's a city of a population of Beijing, right, um, with 25 million. Um, but, but the data that we, we sort of sit on, so, so first of all, that the, 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 the Chinese government just really want to lift up the, sort of the living quality of these people. Um, and second, these, these people, like on our platform, we saw um, there are 600 million um, uh, consumers and on the Alibaba ecosystem on their platforms. Uh, the, there are 800 million uh, monthly mobile active users on the, on their, on the mobile platform. Um, many of them leapfrog the, the desktop phase, right, right, jump right into mobile. Um, and I think you're going to see the next trend of consumer insights coming from that. And it's just, just the way it is, because the, the, the big data. Um, and, and a lot of people talk about big data. And, and, and there's, a, there's a, the joke sort of made, which I like. It's like, it's like a, a, you know, I don't know if it's appropriate to say it here, but it's pretty much like, use sex where everybody talks about it, um, nobody has done it, everyone thinks the other person has done it. Um, and, and, but, but, but in our case, we, we, we really, we, we have done it. Um, the, <laughs> in, in, in a humble that way. That but, wasn't we, uh, by the way, that was just, the, just general. The, the, there's a shopping festival every year uh, in, in, in 11, um, November 11th. I don't know if you guys heard of it. It's called Double Eleven or Singles Day. Um, uh, folks in the retail space have probably heard of it. Um, and last year we did, in 48 hours, uh, we did $30 billion in 48 hours. Um, and the, the cloud platform handles uh, 300, I think the, year, the data from the year before is 325,000 transactions per second. And that's big data. Mm. Um, and that transaction volume is uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday combined multiple five by five times. Um, so, and then people don't, and I, I, think, I, I think we're just, we're just fortunate because we're, we're in China and that's, that's where, and just like Google a few years ago, you saw the latest search trend not happening in the US, happens in Japan. Mm. And it's because of the mobile usage there, right? Um, and I, I don't think we, we did anything, we're, we're particularly smarter than anybody else or anything like that. Uh, it's, just, it's just the way it is because the, that's where the, 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 the insights are coming from. And I think that we could we could we could empower 
and provide those technology and the insights and know-how to the brands. Um, and uh, and the, 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 you know, with Chemist Warehouse here, with, with the iconic, with the, the, the retail customers here, for example, um, from a te te technical standpoint and also from a, a industry, a industry cloud standpoint. Questions? Any questions? Oh, jolly good. Hang on, microphone coming your way. Just tell us who you are, please. Hi, I'm uh, Rosie Baker from Group N. My question is uh, kind of going back to a few points. Um, it's, is it kind of concerning that in a room with some of these Australian brands, no one put their hand up when they said, is anyone, is anyone working with Alibaba? And I think looking at the opportunities that you've outlined in the Chinese market, whether it's inbound or outbound for Australian businesses, what is holding Australian businesses and brands back from that? And I, I mean, I think some of the numbers you just outlined are probably quite terrifying for the scale of Australian businesses. But what do you think is actually holding Australian businesses back? Um, I, it, it's probably our responsibility as well because maybe we, we need to broaden our message a little bit uh, to, to this audience or to the local brands more because we previously we just solely focused on the cross-border e-commerce space. Um, and, and what we've seen actually, there's just, there are a lot of success stories. And as just I mentioned, there are two, over 2,000 brands on our platform, Australian brands already. Um, um, the uh, Miranda Kerr, she launched her uh, cosmetic brand uh, in China uh, on our platform for the first time, and her launched the, 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 the brand. Um, so there are, uh, you know, and you can imagine this sort of, maybe, maybe it's because of the category, I think. You know, if you're in like uh, maternity or baby milk or um, healthcare or whatever, maybe those categories we have a, a higher, but, but I certainly think it's, it's, if you guys are not on it, talk to us. And, and you know, we, we, you, you know, particularly if, if you're, um, if your business strategy has, um, you know, I, I, think, I think in Australia, generally speaking, I think our retail sector bounced back since the financial crisis. Uh, and th there are certain categories that grow faster than the other categories. And, and I think maybe that's why. Um, but I, I certainly think it is, it is a missed opportunity, if, um, you know, it, it, they're, because they're, they're consumer there and we already have a platform and we can provide you with the eyeballs and, um, and the, 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 the help you just navigate through it. And I don't know if, you know, if, if I know there's an agency session before this, but you know, if your agency talk to your agency and ask, really ask them how many of them have expertise to actually help you market your brand in China, the answer is probably they're working with other agency in China to help you get there. Uh, so I think all of these areas are, are opportunities, um, but it comes comes down to the growth strategy for a brand, I guess. Um, if you want, um, you know, if you see there's opportunity for you. Um, but the, the global brands obviously already work with us. Um, in, yeah. Good question. We'll come. We'll get you. Back I don't know if it answers your question, but yeah. We'll get you back here next year. And do the count. Oh, we need to do, do better. The count again. Hopefully, we'll do, do better. The count again. <laughs>